even if climate change did not exist, we would be confronted with multiple environmental problems mm. which threaten the livelihoods of the majority of Indians. Air pollution in North India has got nothing to do with climate change. Mm. The death of our biological death of our rivers has got nothing to do with climate change. The depletion of our groundwater aquifers has got nothing to do with climate change. Mm. Uh, the loss of biodiversity in our forests has got nothing to do with climate change. All these other environmental problems are caused by greed, incompetence, corruption, uh, lack of knowledge, ignorance. But climate change has become sexy. Today I have got a very special guest, Dr. Ramchandra Guha, and we will be discussing his new book. The book is called Speaking with Nature. I spent two decades doing political history and biography. Mm. And, and let me return to my original field of research, which is mm. environmental studies. This is we say Hindus invented plastic surgery. The Americans said, we invented environmentalism. We were the first, we were the first. Mm. So then the Europeans start get, got into the game. If you look around the world, you'll be struck by the extent to which environmentalism is a concern of the rich countries and the middle and upper classes among them and poor countries are not interested. Hmm. So it's part of a kind of a mistaken philosophy that there is a simple angle of repose. Yeah, yeah. If you cut a mountain more than an angle of repose, it will fall down. Yeah, it's yeah. science. Yeah, you yeah. can't deny science doesn't yeah. give a shit to what you believe. Yeah. So in my hometown, there is one. Hmm. You can take a, you can fly from anywhere, Bombay, Delhi, Ahmedabad, <laughs> Bangalore on the direct flight. Yeah. Go. Go to Dharadun on day one, yeah. spend a n uh, night one in a fancy hotel. Yeah. Night two, take a helicopter to Kedarnath. Kedarnath and come Which, back. And come back, come back in two hours. Two yeah. hours. What kind of uh, I'm a spiritual person? If you want to go to Kedarnath, what kind? It is just an ego trip. I take it off. I am back Kedarnath. Yeah, you go and boast to your uh, rich friends in whichever city you are in. You know. Yes. I mean, it's horrible. Today, what is happening in Himalayas, yeah. in very sensitive Himalayan regions, they are blasting the entire mountain. The, Chardam Highway hmm. is a disaster for the Himalayas. Hello and welcome to another edition of Annal Interviews. Today I have got a very special guest, Dr. Ramchandra Guha, and we will be discussing his new book, Speaking with Nature, The Origins of Indian Environmentalism. So thank you very much, sir, being here. This is your second book this year. Yeah, In yeah. January, we had Cooking of Books. Correct. And interestingly, uh, uh, this cooking of books came out when you were, uh, because of pandemic, denied your visits in the archives, Nehru Memorial, and you started looking in your, in your own archives. Now, the second book, it was being written for uh, for a couple of decades, or is it also uh, pandemic well, what, has a role? Yeah. The cooking of books, which is a much shorter and much more personal book uh, about my friendship with uh, the editor Rukunath Bani, was only conceived during the pandemic. I had never thought of it before. Mm. But this book, uh, which is more scholarly, more, you know, about many other people and uh, where I'm not in it, it's about, you know, uh, uh, it's a history of environmental thought over the last hundred years in India. This book I thought of writing in the uh, late 80s, mm -hmm. when I discovered some rare pamphlets written by the economist J.C. Kumarappa and the sociologist Radhakamal Mukherjee, both of whom featured right. this book. I discovered these pam pamphlets in Yale University Library. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I, then I started working only through the 80s and 90s and found other interesting figures. And that was early when you finished your PhD and yeah, you were yeah, in American yeah. University. So I, I did quite a lot of research mm -hmm. on some of these characters. And then uh, I realized that actually, in the very start of the book, you quote a MIT economist. Poor countries and poor individuals simply are not interested. Uh. Can I say that this entire book is also a, against, a statement against or a repudiation of this? Yeah, so that statement by uh, Lester Thoreau, a MIT economist, where he, where he says in 1980, that if you look around the world, you'll be struck by the extent to which environmentalism is a concern of the rich countries and the middle and upper classes among them and poor countries are not interested. Hmm. So it's part of a kind of a mistaken philosophy that first you become prosperous, then you start caring about things like the environment, you know, and, and even when you start caring, it's mostly aesthetic concern about beauty hmm. and, and maybe natural diversity, not human diversity. Hmm. And But it was very widespread. So I quote Lester Thoreau early on. Lester Thoreau was a uh, American economist and a few pages later I quote Eric Hobsbawm, the great Marxist historian, is saying basically the same thing. Hmm. Basically the same thing. So I think uh, the first person in the book uh, you profile yeah. is Rabindranath Tagore, yeah. right? And you say it's a mirrored-minded uh, person, environmentalist, environment. environment uh. and uh, he was an accomplished writer. He was a 
poet, he was a painter, and you call him a precocious environmentalist. We know him for his poetry, his plays, his novels, his writing the national anthem, his influencing Mahatma Gandhi. Hmm. But this side of his work, which is actually quite striking, I tried to, you know. So, can I request you to go to page number six? And here, Tagore yeah. is writing a yeah, letter yeah, a, to yeah. his niece. I'll say two things that should make us appreciate even more yeah. this quote. One is, it's in a private letter to his niece. And in that Bengali. He, huh? In Bengali. And that is second. That's, that's the second. And so it's not for publication. Huh. Second, it is two women. Uh -huh. And you regret that this is less uh, uh, attractive trait of this yeah. book that yeah. I mean, yeah. I, you could get only two women. Tell us about these two personalities and their work. So, so Meera Ben, as you know, was the daughter of an English admiral. She joined Gandhi, uh, uh, devoted her life to him, went to jail in the freedom struggle. And that part of her work is well known. But what is less well recognized is that in 1945, she leaves Gandhi and starts an ashram of her own in the Himalaya, near Rishikesh, called Pashulok. And then she, of course, moves to the interior hills in the Bilangla Valley. And then she spends some time in Kashmir. So she talks about uh, the health of the soil, the dangers of chemical fertilizer, uh, uh, water logging ca caused by large projects. She talks about the declining biodiversity in the Himalayan forests, the encroachment of cheer pine, over uh, Ban joke and what that does to the ecology and also the needs of the local people. And this is two decades before Chipko. Hmm. She's writing about these things. And there's some striking quotes about what uh, large machinery combined with modern greed will do to destroy the earth and destroy human civilization. I mean, it's quite remarkable, some of her writings. Right. So that's one side, that's one woman. The other... This climate change becomes a... Uh, kind of pretext or excuse to hide the incompetence of municipal authorities. In every two-year biodiversity summit is happening. Every annually the climate change summit is happening. Yeah. But we never hear in newspapers and you know writings very less about biodiversity, which is as important. Yes, yeah, absolutely. But all funding is going to climate, climate change. change. Climate change is real. It's serious. Yes, it's existential threat because because of its unpredictability and the fury and the savagery. You know. What is happening in Orissa, mm. uh, uh, you know, as we speak, is in yeah, partly yeah, totally, because of climate yeah. change. Every right? year, yeah. yeah. So, but however, even if climate change did not exist, we would be confronted with multiple environmental problems, mm. which threaten the livelihoods of the majority of Indians. But climate change has become sexy. So, we should recognize that climate change is one of several major environmental challenges India faces. Yes. It should not override everything else, you know. And today, what is happening in Himalayas yeah. and very sensitive Himalayan regions, they are blasting the entire mountain exactly, yeah. and they are making bumper to bumper dams. Dam building, mining and above all, un unregulated road construction. I mean, the Chardam Highway hmm. is a disaster for the Himalayas. And you know, Shekhar Pathak, the great historian of Uttarakhand, whom both of us so greatly admire, he says, we should make... India is fast developing country and population means, you know, pressure. So, how much bearing do you see this on environment? It's more population uh, is obviously, you know, the earth can't and the, the land of India can't sustain indefinite growth. Uh, but population is stabilizing. It is more faulty planning, hmm. a misguided economic policy, uh, unequal access to resources and a lack of awareness of ecological constraints, as you what, as what Navid Dayal said. The mountain can only permit this and nothing more, yeah. which is true of the forest or the rivers or the soil. I mean, if you look at... The book cover page makes a claim that this book is the first substantial study of environmentalism set in any country outside the Euro-American world. When I went to America for two years after my PhD, I found that the Americans were, of course, active they looked at the contemporary environmental movement, you know, the Earth Day movement, anti-pollution movements and so on. And uh, then, they thought, then they discovered these pioneers from the 19th century, American pioneers, John Muir, Henry David Thoreau, Aldo Leopold in the early 20th century. So there were these precocious environmentalists warning of the dangers of unregulated industrialization, urbanization, uh, the use of fossil fuels and what they would do, yeah. uh, and the devastation of the wilderness, you know, the California redwoods and the prairies and the bison. Uh, so, this is a study that shows hmm. that uh, it is not uh, that poor countries, uh, uh, land-based countries, countries whose majority of population is agricultural, has generated a kind of thinking about environmentalism, hmm. which actually is different from Western environmentalism in this respect, that it foregrounds social justice and community control. Right. It's not just about protecting beautiful places, uh, saving endangered species, hmm. but it's about integrating 
human beings with nature. That is why this book is called, the last point I'll make is, uh, speaking with nature, not speaking for nature. Hmm. That human beings with nature, hmm. not human beings protecting nature which is outside them. 